Welcome to Enlighten, where we talk about creative consecration through Christ. And we study scriptures through art. And today we're going to be talking about America the Beautiful. This is going to be um, one of the pieces we are going to talk about. And we actually have two today. So we're going to have this one as well. So this is going to be so much fun because um, it's not one, but two. It's like fireworks. <laughs> We're already starting the 4th of July right now. So um, good morning, everybody. Let me grab my friend. Just can't wait. I, I feel like it is the 4th of already. It's starting. It's like the day before. I feel like 4th of July is every day. I don't know. In my heart, <laughs> I just... Hello. Oh, How are you? So good, good to see you. you. I love your shirt. I'm wearing my red, white, and blue, too. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. I, awesome. I know. I love all the patriotic, like, merchandise I can get. Me, too. <laughs> Me, too. There's never enough of it. Oh, my gosh. This is so fun. So fun. So fun. I know. I was... Telling people, I already, I already feel like it is the Fourth of July. Like I, I, I know. You know, it's like it's always in my heart. I just, I love freedom, and I, I am so excited we get to have you here today. And Shima and I were inklings together. Yes, we are. Are. but we did. Yeah, are always an inkling, always, right? <laughs> always an inkling. Yes. So it was so Wait, fun so to. Someone's um, saying no sound. Are we having trouble with sound? Is it me or I don't know? Maybe that's just. Fine. Fine. Am I fine? Okay. Fine. Maybe make go, sure. yeah, log in and out and see. Okay. Hopefully it's not me. Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> okay. And so, um, it was so much fun, so much fun to, um, just meet you through Emily. Oh, I know. I know. Such a joy. So tell us, tell us a little bit more about yourself. Like, if you yes, know, I'm sure some people know you here from Inklings, but we have new friends every time. So it's so great. Fun. Yes. Um, so it's funny that you talked, we were talking about freedom today. I mean, I, obviously it's a theme of right now, everyone's thinking about it, but I went to yoga early this morning and I, the woman was, you know, just sent, went around the room, which I've never had happen in a yoga class. And she was like, everyone, what are, what uh, freedom are you most grateful for? And everyone kind of gave different types of freedom, like freedom to have my thoughts or freedom to be control of, over this and that. And of course, for me, I'm like, freedom to live in America, <laughs> because if I didn't live in America, I couldn't even be doing yoga. I couldn't be wearing my yoga outfit. And so for those of you that don't know, I'm from Iran, and I grew up there till I was seven. I moved to the U.S. when I was seven, speaking no English at all. I didn't know any words. I knew yes and no, because my parents taught me those, and I got them wrong. Like, I was so, so ill-equipped. I went to second grade knowing no English. And I'm just so grateful for that experience. So yes, we can talk about that later, but I'm from Iran. I'm also a law professor, which is so fun to talk about the constitution here. I teach criminal law and criminal law has a lot of the bill of rights are our focus. So I studied the constitution and I'm excited to talk about that. I have five children from 19 to one is my range of children. <laughs> and I live in Salt Lake City. I grew up in upstate New York. So yeah, that's my, my background. <laughs> Wow, wow, wow. I know you have, you guys, you have two immigrants and two converts here. So. Yes, I know. I know. Which is the most, I mean, aren't we just so grateful, right? Or we're yeah. more grateful for this freedom because we've experienced otherwise. It's like anyone that's experienced something hard, it's like when you go on trek, right? Then you experience your home bed and your food and you're so much more grateful. <laughs> it's like we've experienced that with freedom. <laughs> yes, yes. Oh my gosh. I completely, I love, I love when I see like in the Olympics or like athletes too, just always yes. giving glory to God and just putting their hand on their heart as they do the Pledge of Allegiance and sing in that national anthem and all these just wonderful traditions here in America. Yes, yes. So, oh, it gives me goosebumps just to think how amazing and wonderful that I know. is. And I feel like, you know, I don't know if you felt like this at all growing up, but I felt sometimes growing up that um, it's like I wasn't sure. I was so grateful to have been in come to America. But until I became an adult, I didn't really um, believe that other people thought I was American. It's like you, even when I got naturalized when I was 18, 19, I just thought, well, I'm, 
I'm kind of Iranian American or something, but I think as I've just grown older, I've really embraced like, no, everyone that lives in America has come from somewhere else. We've all been rescued by the hand of the Lord, right? And brought here at some point in our lives to escape some sort of horrible thing in our other country, right? I mean, think of the Mayflower from the pilgrims to the pioneers to those that, that come today as refugees. And I just think we, we all have been brought here. And so we're all American. And so it does give me this sense of pride, like I can be part of this. I don't know if you felt, did you ever feel like that growing up? You know, like yeah. were, you weren't necessarily a part of it and you have to kind of say, no, I am. I don't know if that happened to you. Well, I didn't come to the U.S. until I was like 18. Yeah. So, you know, and I dreamed my whole life to be able yes. to come to America. You know, it was just this like, oh my gosh, longing. And, and this was like dream. Yes. Dream, and everything. I mean, yes. you could see the flag, you yes. know, like, which yes. was very rare. You don't, don't see the flag in communist Bulgaria. No one waves the American flag, you know, no. you don't. So no. I, well, I, I don't know. The flag is so special to my heart yes. and, and the that it comes with and everything yes. that's connected to what America is. I mean, just to see Made in America growing up in Bulgaria, just to see Made in America, which was, again, also very rare. Right. But sometimes I record the things and I would see it, I'm like, <gasps> It's you made it loved it <laughs> just immediately. Oh, I love that so much. You know what? There's so much I love about this first painting, but what I, I mean, there's so many things to talk about, but what I most love is that she's looking up. And I think there's just so much to talk about with that, right? Like she's looking up to God. She, you know, she's grateful for God to have brought her to this land, to uh, allow her to have this flag. I mean, I also think of Moroni with the title of Liberty, which I hope we talk about at some point if we have time, yeah. um, just holding this flag up and it looks heavy and she's young and she's just like, like with all her might holding this beautiful flag and, you know, running and just, it just show, it just feel like you can see her and feel the joy of the gratefulness for freedom. Yes. Yes. I, I'm just glad we have two, right? We're going to talk about, I have. The oh yes. <laughs> that one's good. So good too, but <laughs> we have both of them. It's just so amazing. And yes. I, I just, I just recently learned, and this was so amazing to me. I learned that there's, um, when you, um, full, like when you have like a patriotic event, like, um, Memorial day or veterans day or 4th of July, and there's like a service, like a patriotic service uh -huh. when hold the flag, I didn't know this. It's so amazing. They folded 13 times. Oh, yes. And each fold. Yeah, you probably know already. No, I no. Just I just remember learning that at girls camp. So you came after girls camp or, you know, because you have a flag ceremony and I just, the reverence that people have for the flag, it just gave me so much awe of like, of course, like so many people died so that we could have yeah. this flag, this constitution, all the rights that come with it. And so, of course, we should have reverence for what it represents, which is a lot of sacrifice, a lot of deaths, a lot of brilliant minds that were inspired by God that came up with these principles that we now, that not only our country now enjoys as the base of our freedom, but the rest of the world has copied, right? In a good way, you know, this is the right kind of copy, <laughs> you know what I mean? Where it's like the rest of the world has modeled their constitution based on ours. Um, we, they've admired the freedoms we've gained as citizens and also want the same for themselves. I think it's so incredible. No, it is. It's, it's amazing. I mean, that's what uh, President Oaks, you know, he talks so much about like, it is an insight to all nations. Yes. This is not just for, it's established for all flesh, right? Yes. He says it up front and it's so true. Like, um, it is not just for you, U.S. It's for the whole world to see this freedom. And America is always the country that helps everyone else. I mean, growing up in Bulgaria, I could always see it. Yes. One needs help. There, America would always go out and help. It is so incredible. I just wanted to share those 13 folds real quick. I wanted yes. To it was like, what? This cute, darning lady in our ward gave a talk. I didn't know any That's of this. And she. That's cool. She, I didn't. I don't know the, the what they symbol, symbolize. That's so cool. Tell us. I told. I really wanted to share it because it was like just on Sunday. I was like trying to write them down. Like, <laughs> just in time for you to share it with everybody. I'm so happy. It's so neat. And she's so cute. Her husband was a veteran. So she wow. loves hatred. She's from the heart. So yes. I'm, I'm kind of summarizing them. You guys can totally Google them after and find them. But it was so cute. So the first fold um, is the symbol of life. Second fold, our belief in eternal life. It's just mm. so amazing. 
seeing how much God is part of every fold. Oh, I mean, yes. It's like the foundation. The third um, fold is honor and tribute to the veteran. Number four is trusting in God. The fifth fold is tribute to our country. The sixth fold is where our heart lies, the Pledge of Allegiance. Yeah. Seven tributes to our armed forces. Eight, honoring our mother. Oh. I thought it was <laughs> nine um, tributes to womanhood. Wow. Uh, tribute to the father and fatherhood. Wow. Um, Eleven representing, this is so cool, you're going to love this. The eleventh the 11 fold represents the lower portion of the seal of King David and King Solomon and glorifies the God of Abraham, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Wow. I was like, what? This is a covenant. You know, it's the a covenant. covenants. Yes. It's in the, it's in the wow. Of the flag. And then um, thir- 12 was emblem of eternity, like God, Holy Ghost, and Jesus Christ. And 13 was in God we trust. Wow. So that's kind of, wow. oh. They're all like every fold and then you fold them up and they, they're supposed to look up towards the sky, towards, they put it up so you see the stars, remembering wow. that. Wow. That, that is that, so oh, beautiful. So I had no idea. And you think of all, you know, it's funny because we sometimes forget that these are the virtues, these are the beliefs of the people that created this flag, that created this country and that what it stands for. And I had this great quote that I saw that I, I pinned because I was like, we need to, I wanted to share it with everyone. But there was a European, um, his name's Francis Grant, and he was observing life in the US in the 1800s, so a long time ago. And he said he was just so impressed with the morality of US, early US citizens. And he just said, you know, he said, I consider the domestic virtue of Americans as the principal source of their, of their qualities. So you think of all these principles that you said, you know, like honoring their parents, you know, all these important things. He says, it acts as a promoter of industry, as a stimulus to enterprise, as the most restrainer, powerful restrainer of public vice. It reduces life to its simplest elements. It makes happiness less dependent on precarious circumstances. It ensures peace and good order that all the laws enacted for that purpose. And it is a better guarantee of the permanency of the American government than any written constitution so he's saying basically if we don't practice these virtues right that if we don't have these morals underlying the constitution this public set of morals right where we're you know um we have integrity we have good domestic habits he talks about religious devotion high respect for morality then the constitution doesn't mean anything so it's really like if we don't remember like you said the fold on the flag each one and, and keep all of those as things that represent us then the flag means nothing anymore. And I can you know, put this whole um, quote up, uh, yeah. somebody asked for it, but I just think it's so beautiful to think about you know, what it stands for, right? What obligations it gives us. Because when you read those 13 things, I'm like, okay, like these are important values that I need to respect as an American. And I want to respect as an American. And I think they're so, so neat. Yeah, yeah. Those are, I mean, it's like the core. It's the core. Yes of the society. And I love like actually in section 109, which is so yes. awesome, the prophet has been ad- admonishing us and, and yes. pondering and study it. I was just so excited because I found this reference about the constitution. Yep. Right. 109 b- verse 54. And he, it says, have mercy, O Lord, upon all the nations of this earth. Have mercy upon the rulers of our land. May those principles just like what we're talking about, which were so honorably and nobly defended, Mm -hmm. namely the constitution of our land by our fathers be established forever. I mean, it's like like seeing this stamp of approval. I mean, God, it's God's word and inspiration that the constitution was able to be created. It's just so, I have to say, I don't, I mean, you're the law professor. You can enlighten us, you know. I can't wait to hear what you're going to say. I just have to share quickly what my first contact with the U.S. Constitution. Oh, yeah. I, I was, like, um, trying to find out so much about America, and I couldn't. You can't just go to the library and, and pull up a copy of the United States Constitution growing up in Bulgaria. There was no such thing. Interesting, so, yeah. I, everything was hidden. Everything was, like... Um, forbidden anything has to do with the West and freedom. And so 
my sweet dad, bless his heart, he had found this Xerox copy of the U.S. Constitution. Wow. Printed, black marketed, that he had bought for me. Oh my goodness. How <laughs> precious. Oh, my, it was like. And I had like my thick dictionaries and I could barely speak English, but I wanted to know what, what does the constitution say? <laughs> oh. how, how did you even hear about the constitution, right? Like, how did you know what it was? Okay, so we, I mean, we knew a lot about America. It just wasn't, we didn't know details about America. Okay, because so. you couldn't get access to reading materials right. and books. And we, knew, we knew they have this law that's like no one else's, but wow. what it was like, right? We wow. knew funny in the newspapers it would say like oh americans get drunk by like a drinking coke or they're so poor they can't buy pay for their cars yes like, yes coke, no sense coke does not make you drunk and we have a car <laughs> for. hello we went years to have a car anyway yes yes silly things in the news they would say i'm like that's not true that's not true so i'm like dad we have to find please please find something you right know? and it was just like, like this really really um joyous moment for me to actually lay my hands wow not on, like real american copy it was just xerox it was like totally like just to be know, able to read it but, how grateful yeah like i literally actually printed the i printed the constitution and the amendments because i just love yes. it so much it's so I, good you know, i'm so glad i know it's so great you can just print it. it's four pages i know <laughs> words. It's, uh, not that long, but it's not that long just like taking, you know, taking my dictionary, Shima, you would know this because oh, you, yeah. you had to do And I'm like, we the people, you know, I mean, <laughs> like, wait, yes, what perfect pursuit of have I was really touched by um, life, liberty and pursuit of happiness. That oh, was like, and so good private property because we never had private property. But Gary, yes. property is like, wait, you can like private property is so amazing and, right oh it was just like my my precious possession that it was like like a sacred document from god oh, you know, oh absolutely fired them so that that was my first contact you know wow with the constitution of the United that is so beautiful and you loved it from from first read <laughs> well oh my gosh it took me forever to like <laughs> to get through it <laughs> once you got through it <laughs> No, it's incredible. Just, our founding fathers were so well read, you know, yes. when they wrote it. And they still wrote it in a very simple way. Also, I feel like right. rest and yes, but um, it it was not simple for me. I and, have and to you say know what's that. so interesting when you th when you think about the history of the Constitution, they didn't get it, but for a lot of hardship, right? They all had experienced the discrimination, the kind of state churches in Europe, and um lack of freedom to, to be who they wanted to be and, and worship how they did. And so, you know, all these things, it's like, like people that have been in a, in a abusive relationship, like, no, you know, yeah. these are things I want to avoid in the future. And that's exactly what they were, right? They were in a place where they didn't have freedom. They had a king, they had all these restrictions. And so they're like, well, these are the restrictions we must have because in case it ever happens again, we won't let it, right? That's kind of what they're, and so I just think it's so, it's their, their background is so interesting. And just to kind of juxtapose like i think when you think about the book of mormon so i don't know if you've ever um learned about that background of lehi so lehi's in this land right he's kind of similar to our founding fathers in a really difficult spot because he's preaching things that god is telling him about jesus christ and how he's going to come and about the 12 apostles like he has all these visions of things that have not happened but they're about to come but the people in his time are not okay with this. They don't want to hear about Jesus. And it's actually something, you know, biblical scholars that are not of our faith have documented. I don't know if you've read about it, but it's, it's called the Deuteronomist. They actually went through the Bible and deleted some, a lot of the reference to Jesus. They didn't want to talk about Jesus or temples being in lots of locations just one. So anyway, it was, it was, he was in this unfortunate time or fortunate time because God wanted to save him, but, but where he didn't have these dreams. And so when he comes to America and he's writing you know, the Americas, I guess, right? We don't know exactly where, but he's writing about all these freedoms. It's like the founding fathers, like there's so much in the Book of Mormon about freedom and liberty. And, and so many of the people that came from the old world appreciate it, just like our founding fathers, right? It did when they came later. And I just think that's such a cool principle. It's like when you haven't had freedom, when you've been, you know, Lehi was almost killed for his faith in um and in the things he preached that he didn't have freedom of speech 
but when they came here and they were able to be free, he appreciated that. Wow, that I didn't know that. Yeah, that's isn't that really isn't that cool? Sure. I I was thanks for sharing. That's really awesome. I know that what struck me as I was um pondering about freedom is just Alma twenty one, just mm -hmm. in a recent study. Mm -hmm. That like, um what is it, twenty one, twenty two, uh -huh. he was talking out and he also declared unto them that they might have the liberty of worshiping the lord their yes. god their yes. desires yes whatever they were in and doesn't that make doesn't it sound like the first amendment it does oh there's so much honestly <laughs> that, that are here and and it's so much and some and especially now as you know our our brethren our and our prophet has have really focused on covenants there, if you kind of read the Book of Mormon as a, a document about liberty and covenants, being a covenant land that we live in, there's there's really those those themes are throughout. And uh, I wanted to share what Lehi said. Um, and this one is just every time I read it to everyone who immigrates here, who joins the church, because I think it's so important. It's, and it's for all of us. So all of us at some point were immigrants to this country, right? It's like, in, unless you're uh, you know someone a descendant of the people of the Book of Mormon, but it says. Um, you know, uh, Lehi is prophesying, prophesying about the land of liberty. And he says, notwithstanding our afflictions, we have obtained a land of promise, which is choice above other lands. The Lord God had covenanted with me should be a land of our inheritance. This is Second Nephi 1.5. You want to put it in your notes for those that, uh, you know, one one five, And it says, should be a land of our inheritance of my seed. Yea, the Lord had covenanted this land unto me and to my children forever. And also all those who should be led out of other countries by the hand of the Lord. I don't know if you've seen that one. Oh, yeah. It felt like your heart it's on just well, because it's like, <laughs> it's underlined because we've been led. And so that shows us any of us and wherever in our family history, we came to America, it's, we were led out of the hand by the hand of the Lord. And we have this Liberty and it's a covenant land, right? And you think of like the covenants that we're able to make with God being in this land, the freedoms we enjoy to go to temple, to build temples, as many as we want, right? I mean, that's kind of, we, we both appreciate coming from countries where you cannot build a temple in Iran. And, you know, in the the Soviet countries, obviously you couldn't then. And I don't even know, you, you probably don't even have one in Bulgaria now or anywhere close, no. right? Is there anything in the Eastern Bloc? Nothing, right? There's no, what's the closest temple to your homeland? It's it's actually Freiburg, Germany, which was okay. Germany. That's right, so that's hopeful. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yes, yeah. It's so neat that we all, at some point in our history, have been led by the hand of the Lord here, and it, it's consecrated, it's said to him. And so if we, you know, we, we can't forget him. And I think there's so much in the Book of Mormon of like, don't forget God. And it's also a theme in the Old Testament, right? As soon as we forget God, then those covenants are not, you know, we don't hold those covenants as well. And so I just think it's so important as we think about how grateful we are for this flag, that we remember God who made it all possible that we have this country. Yes. Oh my gosh. It's so, and I love, I love how it says I have on the, my license plate on the back of my car and God we trust. Like, oh, I love it. Yes. <laughs> I just love that. I think it's like such an amazing reminder that this yes. is our strength. And right. he is, this is his constitution that he, you know, these are his laws. And yeah. I so neat when you're talking about freedom um, of, of speech and of expression, the first amendment, all, yes. all of it. So inspired and Elder Oaks, um, I love how he said, without the Bill of Rights, America could not have served as the host nation of the restoration of the gospel. That's right. Which, which began just became uh, began three decades later. Right. Which is like, wow, wow. Like, it was so vital to have freedom of religion, of speech, yes. of assembly. Yes. You, you can't do that. Like, in Bulgaria, could you say Same with Iran. No, you can't. And I think about, so um, my part of my story is, you know, so I grew up in Iran, I was seven. My mom was, uh, wanted democracy. And so what she was doing was protesting against the government. So in 1979, we had an Islamic dictatorship take power that said, you know, everyone has to be Islamic. You can't convert. There's no freedom of speech. There's no freedom of choice. Um, you all have to be Muslim basically, right? And you have to practice it in this way. And it's it, in a lot of ways, it's like Satan's plan, right? It's like, you all have to be religious and it's dictated by law rather than by, you know, by your heart, you get to choose what faith you want and whether you want to practice faith. Anyway, so my mom was actually put in political prison and was punished because of, you know, exercising her right for of speech for wanting religious freedom. So, uh, you know, there was a couple shifts. So we had a king in Iran 
that forced everybody not to wear a religious garb. He didn't want them to cover their hair, the women. He didn't want them to wear modest clothing. And so they didn't like that. The people were like, no, let us wear. And then the, the Islamic theocracy comes and says, no, you must wear it. So it was like, both sides of freedom were just you know there's no freedom you just have to choose you know there's no there's no ability to choose and and then my mom was um you know used her speech rights to to demonstrate and then was put in political prison for it and so you know the fact that we then were able to come to america i mean i appreciate this more than anything because i know even in the country if i even go back today it is still that way right there's no there's not any changes yet for the people that live in iran they cannot convert they cannot speak freely. And a few years ago, if anyone followed the protest, they saw that many people were jailed because they took the, the cover off their hair. Um, and so this is something it's like, yes, if, were it not for the Constitution, and these Bill of Rights, we wouldn't have these protections. And I'm so grateful that they thought to do that. It's funny. I don't know if you've read the history of the Bill of Rights, but it was kind of a challenge. Like, for a while they were like, well, we don't need these Bill of Rights. And a few people were like, no, 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 we're not joining your little 13 colonies unless you give us the Bill of Rights just to make sure. And they thought they didn't need it, but aren't we so grateful now that we have it because we go back to these rights so often, even in America today to, to protect speech that's not popular, you know, or, yes. um, you know, in all these things, we, it's, I'm so grateful we live in a land where people are able to speak about things I don't agree with and I don't like, but that's okay because that's what they, that's the whole point, right? Yes, yes. Oh my gosh, that's so, wow, what a story. Crazy. What a story of perseverings and, and, and wanting freedom and, and yes. the agency, the free agency that we've been, I know we have, and we've been giving, um, I love this comment. There's a great yes. quote here. Really. This nation is the cradle of humanity where life on this earth began in the garden of Eden. This is oh, a I love it. new Jerusalem. This, this is a place where the savior will come to his temple. That's right. Oh, right. it's so, so good. It's so yeah. good. Thank you for that. I have one other quote from Joseph Smith that I love, and it's so good because it, 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 I feel the same way. He says, I am bold to declare before heaven that I'm just as ready to die in defending the rights of a Presbyterian, a Baptist, or a good man of any other denomination. You know, as for a member of our faith, for the principles, he would trample upon uh, any, you know, any rights, basically. And so he says, um, you know, anyone that tramples the rights of the Roman Catholics or any other denomination, who may be unpopular, too, too weak to defend themselves. He says, I have this love of liberty, which inspires my soul, civil and religious liberty to the whole of the human race. And I just love that because you think about our freedom of religion and, and speech, and Joseph Smith understood this, the right, you know, being a minority religion, being persecuted. And he says, I would defend this right for the Catholics, for the Protestants, for those who might persecute him. And that's what I love about America. It's not like we're standing for only one yeah. Faith, right. It's like we re we re respect the uh, agency of all to practice whatever faith they might want to practice, which is so unique, right? Yes, and that's the freedom of religion. And so, to me, the most amazing thing about the Constitution is that it's it's by the people for the people. Yes. I mean that that's never happened before. We know right, right. that is unprecedented because, like, God's established it. It's that's His. Right. It's and right. That, that I mean, you have monarchs. You, we That's see right. that with people that become like it, totalitarian regimes. They're they're powerful. They crumble. There's there's no freedom there. And that's and right. Um, and it's like a government by the people. Yes. For people. never happened before. That's right. It is just absolutely incredible to to think about something that was so new and never done before. Yes. Yes. So enlightened by and, God's hand. And for two reasons, right? Like one you mentioned is everyone else had kings. So then to have this kind of constitutional democracy that is also so complex and brilliant, right? It's one, uh, you know, President Oaks talks about in his talk, there's two different types of separation. Number one, division of delegated power between the nation and the states. So separating the power between the federal government and, and having the states have their own rights, which is super important. You think about federalism and how important that is that the federal government is only given a few rights. Their right is to tax, to do interstate commerce, and they provide security and deal with foreign nations. That's it. Then the states retain all other powers. And they, you know, crime, you think of, and this is something people, I didn't realize until I went to law school, but so anything criminal, you think of like murder, rape, that's the states that decide how they want to punish those things. And the, the idea is as Americans, we get to move around to whatever state we want. 
where we like to get our rights protected the way we want them, right? If we like the, the way criminal laws handle in Utah, we stay here, you know, we, or we can move to California if we like it better. Family is also a jurisdiction of uh, re retained power of the states and health. Those are the main powers of the state. And so he talks about how important that is, that federalism, which is so brilliant, again, that the founding fathers thought of that because they just had these states that had different views and different values. And so they wanted them to have a, some jurisdiction, you know, over the people that lived in those states. And then the second one is separation of power between the branches, which we do know about. Everyone knows about executive, you know, judicial and legislative branches and that separation. But I think both of those, you know, President Oaks comments of this is divine. It's divinely inspired because it's brilliant. <laughs> you know, yeah. anything brilliant that we come up with comes from God. <laughs> it does. Yeah. Right. Oh. Oh, I love that. I, the, the idea of like having checks and balances, you know, that yes. you can not let anyone have more power than that they're supposed to. Right. And the, the power, like you said, that we can vote. I mean, that like, and be involved. I think that's something I am kind of guilty of. And I want to do so much more of yes. being involved in my yes. whole community. Like I, really, yes. my goal is year is I'm going to go yes. to four town meetings. You know, that, just that's so important. And let me tell you why that's so important. I'm so glad you're doing that. So President Oaks, as you know, has been big on this, like run for office, show up for meetings, talk to people. Everyone doesn't need to run, but, but there's lots of things he gives us to do. You can donate money. You can speak to people. You can write them letters. You can call them, you, you know, and it's, as you know, local levels of government, it's easier to talk to the, your city council people versus your, you know, senator. But, um, but he wants us to do that because I'll tell you something I learned. So I, for, I forgot to mention my job, but I, I'm a law professor, but also I work at the Wheatley Institute where my focus is on looking at religion and how it benefits society. And so I just went to what we have every year. So at BYU, there's a conference. It's the Wheatley Institute and the International Law and Religion, um, uh, International, what is it? The Center for Law and, and um, Religious Free, I can't forget, but it's Religious Freedoms Institute. Sorry, I'm like blotching the name right now but it's at BYU Law as well. And they focus on international religious freedom throughout the world. So we do this annual review every year where we talk about the state of religion. And one of the, the biggest takeaways for me at this, where we're talking about kind of what are the numbers of religion? How is religious freedom in the US? How are religious people doing? Like, and the biggest takeaway I had, there was, they had a professor come, he's also a pastor. And he was showing us the data on religion and what was happening. And it's, you know, a little bit remarkable and a little scary, it can be honestly, because he says, look, what's happening is the world is dividing and people are, there's a lot of people that are religious and they're getting more religious and there's people that are atheist agnostic, but, and they're also getting more so away from religion. Like people are dividing between the religious and their non-religious. But what's interesting is the people that are not of faith, um, you know, atheist agnostic don't uh, appreciate the faith, uh, you know, that we do are becoming more and more political. And so I think it's important. I don't think, you know, President Oaks would say this, but I want to say this because I think it's important. It's like for people of faith, if you value your faith, right? Um, like the founding fathers, we do need to speak up mm -hmm. about our faith and however that might mean for you. You know, yeah. it, it could be for different parties. It could be different for different candidates. It doesn't have to lead you in one direction or not. But I think the fact that um, people that are non-religious are getting more political, I think it's a call for people who are religious to say, hey, you know, it's probably important for us to speak up too, so that we're all represented. I think sometimes when we're people of faith, we do get busier with our churches that we forget to be politically active. But I just think you're right. I need to be better too. Actually, this year I went for my caucus for the first time yeah. <laughs> in Utah because, you know, our bishop said we should. And I was like, okay, I'm going to go. And it was awesome. It was so neat to see people in my community being elected for things. And so anyway, I don't know uh, what you think about that, but it's, so fascinating to me how important it is, like you said, for us to get involved. Yes, yes. And that's, you know, I think, uh, I mean, we all know a vote. We do that, definitely. Sure. But I loved, I loved, he said, he said like he gave us like five or six things, but some of the ones I really loved, he said, um, pray for the Lord to guide and bless all nations and their leaders. Oh, that was so, like, so good. He, he was like, like, what are some things you guys can do? Like, what can we do together? Yeah. To the situation because like i i think this is a um a great quote uh, peggy shared i plead this is again hera Lee. i believe she was still quoting him i plead with you um not to teach pessimism preach that is america that this is the greatest country in all the world even if it looks like the government's falling apart peggy saying have faith in america uh, and 
set up for. Yes, and this quote too, how um, even when the constitution hangs by a thread, the hope is in God and us as his instruments to do his work that will not be frustrated. That is so true. And these are so true. Like these are the things that we can do so that yes. we can stand up and defend it. I mean, this is a yes. call to defend the constitution. Absolutely. To defend rights and we want i also think unless we read it and know the constitution will never be we won't know what we're defending yes and it's so important to actually read it it's yes. not that long it's not that you know i i literally just printed it off yes like, it's like it's yes I, and read it to your kids what a better thing to do to celebrate the fourth of july than to have your kids read the constitution or read it to them if they can't understand it or explain to them what it is. I'm going to do that today after this. <laughs> That's okay. my plan. I'm going to teach my kids the constitution because it's so important. And I wanted to go back to what you said earlier about how important it is to pray for people in all nations. Yes. I mean, think of what that means. That's also like this election, right? People have very divided feelings and we're not going to talk yeah. about politics, but we, we, we do need to pray for whatever leader, whoever leader is in power right now. So right now, president Biden and whoever becomes in power because praying for our leaders is part of what we do. Right. This is important for us to pray for our leaders. And I wanted to share something um, that I thought that was so interesting. So when Jesus Christ said to love your enemies, the way it was translated in um, when the way he said it, it was the hostile ones. Pray for the hostile ones. And it's like the people that are unfriendly to us. And it included your political enemies, right, your personal enemies, all of these things. And so part of us saying that as Christians, we're going to love our enemies means we're going to love those people who are on different sides of the aisle than we are. And I think that's a lot harder to do than to, than, than um, we think, right? Because people get their opinions and they feel very strongly that they're right. But I think, you know, as Christians, first, before any political party, before any even allegiance to America, right? I mean, our allegiance is to God and to Jesus Christ. That's our allegiance. And then after that, it's we're Americans. But um, and, and luckily for us, it doesn't contradict because America does uh, espouse these values of trust in God and all these things. But I just think how important it is that we need to pray for our enemies. And, you know, any, that means anything, anyone on the other side of the aisle. Yeah. And so I don't know how you think about that and how you deal with this. And I love that we, when we talked before, you're like, let's not talk politics. And I'm like, amen, because I don't want to talk it either. But I do think there, there is this um, ability to be more Christian by thinking about, okay, those that I don't agree with, like, how do I love them? How do I try to see things from their view as well? And how do I, you know, bridge this gap? Because I think there is a gap in our country right now. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I, I, I just love all these quotes as we're talking. I know. This is just good very, job. I love it. So good. And I, I love this one too. Um, okay. So he said the constitution will be saved by the righteous citizens of this nation who love and cherish freedom and by enlightened members of this church so oh, that's good beautiful. it's so good so beautiful I, lo I love enlightened thank you i know <laughs> it is because we can all be enlightened right that's what you're trying to teach us I, is how to be more enlightened I, <laughs> so i think that's that's like such a big thing because we want to defend people that love the constitution this yes. is who stand behind whoever they are they that's right they keep constitution we're after that. like we love them because that that's right is god's law you know and yes. i think that's like such an amazing um way to to look at people you know when you're looking at someone if you want to vote for them do they keep the constitution is that the most that's, sacred that's a good point do yes they abide do they defend these principles do that's they right. stand for that and because we know we're learning and we're uh, our constitution is uh, uh, like not new to us we can see right. what they stand that's, for right like we, right. oh i like this i love this person i'm gonna vote right. for this right this right. is our um this is what i stand for i love how joseph smith when he was talking about the constitution he called it a heavenly banner uh, i thought that was oh that's so, so good the standard that's so good those words are so beautiful that so beautiful here to his heart i know here i was Showing. so good yeah show it closer i know i what see how it's getting eaten a little bit this is like yes sometimes. and she's preserving it she's like i know no. she's like we need people she's holding on to that i love freedom. that i love that and tell us what you were thinking because i love the kind of like we have like on one side this hope right the fireworks and this beauty and then on the other or is that or is that more just like threat i don't know because on the one side it's dark yeah. and gloomy like tell us what you were thinking when you made this 
Yeah, no, absolutely. I really, um, that was the whole idea that it is, it, we know that we know that there's like a threat to that's the a constitution. This threat. Is oh, absolutely. Threat, you know, that's going on. And yes. Uh, and, and how, like you said, we need to be vocal. We need to stand up for yes. it and we need to say how precious and divinely inspired it is. And, and it, we need to sing the national anthem when we're singing it and put our hand on our heart. You know, these are just things we love and do. Yes. With. And yes. flag and, and just all these things I think are just so um, amazing. I did put the fireworks in here. Yes, I love yeah. that. There's hope, right? There's, There's hope. hope. Oh, and we know that we know like um, that yes. we're keep saving the constitution so it's like yes. a lot you know what you know what that part that fireworks remind me of it's like when president nelson recently has said like we're gonna see um some of the most beautiful manifestations of the lord's power in these days even though and you know we have growing darkness in our world and i just see that it's like yes the constitution's under threat right religion's under threat like all these um, the world's morality has changed, but we also have these beautiful, you know, uh, lights, these rays of light coming from heaven today. And that's what I see over there in that corner. And I'm like, there's hope, right? Because there's people of faith still left on this earth that love God and want to preserve these values. And I just think that's so beautiful. Yes, yes, yes. That, that was the, the main idea, this machine monster trying to take it. Yes. Um, it's so good. And, I, you know, I want to say, too, in the background, you have the like, kind of large and spacious buildings, which I mean, reminds me of like some, you know, dystopian city where, you know, there's just like, but that's kind of, it's so powerful because you think of, you know, we need to step away from that, right? We need to step away from the large and spacious buildings. We need to kind of come to God. And this woman is just like basking in light, like holding on to the constitution away from these, the city, which I think is so pretty the way you, and, and, and is that what you were thinking when you kind of showed it? I, like what? Yeah. Oh, it's totally. so good. You're so brilliant. Oh, it's, it's heavenly father. I'm always like, what do we do? What do we do? You know, it's, it's so good. It's so good. I love it. It is inspiration. And I, I love this um, comment on here. Also, the founders left the power of the purse um, closest to the people yes. of Congress. If yes. our re representatives commit to only vote for fund constitutional laws, then we, ha then we have power to check government. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's true. That's so true. Uh, the, mm -hmm. I think this whole idea that we, the people, it, it is for our protection. That yes. is to me is so so absolutely inspiring another another one idea i had is too is how we can with our own gifts and abilities we can actually um like as we stand to defend the constitution we yes. can use our gift to do that as well which is amazing right you have unique gifts i mean you're a law professor absolutely you know law yes and by no law, i mean this is amazing is. you know that you is. defend that and so something i um you know think you'll appreciate with our background is so I grew up in a Muslim country as I mentioned earlier and one of the first things I did when I was a lawyer so I graduated law school and I clerked for a judge and then I had my first firm law firm I worked at and I had the opportunity to do pro bono work where I could just kind of represent whoever I wanted and the first case I took on was I just saw it come up it was like here, here's the people that don't have lawyers that need a free lawyer and my firm allowed me to represent some of them and this one that came up, I honestly think it was inspired by God that I saw this because it was a Hasidic Jewish rabbi who was uh, imprisoned in New York and he couldn't pray in the prison that he was in because as you, as some of you might know, prison uh, cells have a toilet inside and Jewish and Islamic law both prohibit you from praying in a place that's unclean, that's physically unclean and a toilet makes that room unclean. And so he would need to get out of his room to pray, but they wouldn't let him out in the hours he needed to pray. And he had a very strict schedule of exact times to pray. Very, And I saw this case and I said, you know, who better to defend this beautiful Jewish man's right to pray than a formerly Muslim, now Christian lawyer, right? And I mean, honestly, I have to say, like when I walked into the prison to meet with him, it was one of those moments, and I'm sure you've had them before where you are places, but I knew I was doing exactly what the Lord had trained me to do. I gained the skill of practicing law, of being able to understand the constitution, to be able to understand religious freedom. I even took classes at BYU, not even knowing about religious freedom. So I, I just believed this so strongly and I was able to represent him. And at first I was worried. I'm like, what's he going to think of this formerly Muslim Christian woman 
being his lawyer, I mean, he was a little, you know, okay, but he was so grateful. And we ended up succeeding in getting him accommodated uh, oh, yeah, with his yeah. case. Yeah. yeah. And it was so neat. And I just, it was, it was such a power to this, you know, I was brought to the, by the hand of the Lord to help others, to help everyone. You know, we all have these abilities, these skills. You have the ability to inspire, you know, thousands and millions with your art. And we all have this ability to kind of bring these principles to, to, the, to the world, right? You know, yeah. whether you're defending through the law or whether you're inspiring through art, it's just, we can all be used in our different ways to, def, to um, impress upon people the importance of the, the liberties and the freedoms that we share. Yes, yes. Just talking about the liberty and the freedoms, I actually, um, I love how it says that uh, those rights, I looked up the Latin word, um, um, okay, so where it talks about the um, inalienable rights given by God, yes. in life, liber liberty, in pursuit of happiness, Right. I love the Latin word is alius, which means other, and then to mm. call something alienable means that there's no other that like uh, those rights that, that God has given us and uh, they're established by God, therefore they cannot be removed or abolished. Oh, so, interesting. How powerful. Wow, like, it is. That, it's like a, it's a divine inheritance. It's almost like it's a divine gift. It yes. can't be removed. Yes. That's amazing. That's amazing. I, I was like, whoa, that, that's what inalienable rights means. I mean, yeah. I <laughs> know, like the deep, meaning of that, which I thought it was so neat. And um, I love this when um, Elder Oaks would say, he said that um, God has given his children moral agency, the power to decide and to act. And then he goes over the five principles that he believes yes. he said that the constitution is inspired. He's yes. like, these are the, I just want to touch on them real quick because yes. they're so, so amazing. First, he said, the principle that the source of government power is the people. The people. Mm -hmm. So it's us, the people. Second, um, a second inspired principle is the division of delegated power between the nation and its subsidiary states, which we just talked about. And then he talked about the separation of powers as number three, the legislative, executive, and judicial, and checks and balances, which we also talked about. And then he said, um, I love this. I love a fourth inspired principle is the cluster of vital guarantees of individual rights and specific limits on government authority in the Bill of Rights adopted by the amendment just three years after the Constitution went to force. So he's like, study the Bill of Rights, find out what those amendments are, you know, what, how is that, um, how is that so essential for us and, and empowers us to have our freedom? And then number five, he said, vital purpose of the entire constitution. He's like, that. that's inspired just all together. He said, we are to be governed by law and not by individuals and our loyalty is to the constitution and its principles and processes, not to any office holder. Oh, I and love so, it. Uh, boy, I just get goosebumps just thinking of, I love it. so him. good. Don't you just, oh, I, his, I love it. You know? I, I, I love him so much. I mean, he just is so brilliant and also so faithful and humble. I mean, a couple of years ago, I don't know if anyone, it's like the biggest mic drop where he gave that talk that was basically, you know, all scriptures the words of Jesus. and all deep. <laughs> yes. Where he just basically quoted Jesus. And I'm like, you are the most humble person because you know, like it's like mic drop because Jesus, <laughs> you know, yes. everything Jesus says is exact. I mean, well, what, what more can you say? And I just thought he is just, he's incredible. He, he, they all are, but, um, art, I did, our, I was heavenly father's like, you have to create something with this. I wanted, I, I was, as he's speaking, I'm like, oh my gosh, I want them all. I want to know all yes. the words, his heart out of like, like what is it? Thousands and thousands yes. of words. Yes scripture and pages and pages that's what meant most important for him to share in that talk uh -huh. so that's right i went i know i did little artwork with all of his words in combined like in have you that, posted that one i need to look that yeah, one out on that's my, cool yeah it's okay a, i need I, to find I, like, it oh I studio, so when i walk in i'm like and sometimes like a, a one sentence would come out you know that oh it's so good because so awesome. the words of jesus christ are <laughs> That's it, right? It's like, it's, I, you know, I wanted to say something you were saying earlier about um, President Oaks said important, it's important we're ruled by law and not men. 
And I think this really ties to some of the themes that we talk about in the Book of Mormon as we're reading the Book of Mormon here. And this is something we're going to get to as kind of foreshadowing for like the last, the last parts. But um, there are times where there are righteous people and they try to get somebody righteous to be their king. And typically that person says no. I don't know if you've noticed that. And sometimes they're a, an unrighteous king like King Noah and Amalekiah, Amalekai, where we talk about the, the rights of liberty. But I just think it's interesting because it's not about the person, right? Because sometimes the individual can be great, but there is no king but Jesus Christ, right? Jesus Christ yeah. is our Lord and Savior and our king. And so I think it's important to remember, like, we shouldn't be ruled by individuals. Like, while men is on earth dictating, it should be ruled by law because that's the safest way to protect all of our rights. Even if one individual seems great, we don't want to give them that power, right? We want to have it. And, and that's why Moroni, I, I just think this goes so well with what these, this artwork we're talking about and this, these themes, but where he, you know, Malachi is trying to get, yes, I love this, please hold that one. Amalekai is trying to become king and Moroni says no. He, he takes a piece of his clothes off and he writes on it, in memory of our God, our religion, our freedom, our peace, our wives, our children. And then he holds it up as the title of liberty. He bows himself and prays to God for the blessings of liberty to rest upon the brethren so, so long as there should be a band of Christians remain on the land. And I just love that so much. Like to get God to bless them, he knew that they had to have liberty. And so, yes, her holding up this flag you know, with all her might, it reminds me of Moroni. And, and then all the men that saw Moroni said, yes, we want the same. They ripped their clothing too, which is an old kind of Hebraic thing that people used to do. They used to rip their clothing when they wanted to make a covenant with God. So this was kind of what they did. And then they, you know, planted the standard of liberty, which we now enjoy. I just think it's just so divinely inspired and so beautiful. Yes, I love that. I love what you said, because actually you answered a question. Someone here was wondering, how does the fifth of oh. Late. the source of government power is the people and we are to be governed by law and not individuals yes. so i you, you sharing that actually answered that i okay oh, um and i don't know if there's anything you wanted to add to that but no i mean i think that i think it's just it's just that and i can't see the question but um because mine just got sh you know <laughs> pause for a minute but um definitely touched on that yes How, how inspiring that is that really it is um the the people that choose their leaders that they choose their government right. and it's right. um like you said i mean they had a tough they seemed the other way and they're like no we can't do that again we, we don't want to do that something. again we did yeah they knew and it's it's neat because there's so much so many reminders like they knew where they came from they had to leave the old world to talk yeah. about jesus and i mean and this is so cool and you should say this after because I, I know you're a nerd of the scriptures like i am but the Deuteronomist, like, it's crazy what happened to the Bible later on, because there was a lot of traces of Jesus kind of taken out. And you think, because a lot of people read the Book of Mormon, they're like, why is Lehi like so into Jesus Christ before he came? Well, the, a lot of people were, and they kind of got silenced basically by others. There was a lot of revisions. And, and this is kind of coming out by biblical scholars. But yeah, I just think it's so cool to think, you know, what we have, that's why the Book of Mormon is the book of our time, because yes. it does have more of a completeness. Yes of what, how we understand Jesus Christ. I mean, there's so much more in, about Jesus yes. here yes. than we, I mean, I love the New Testament. It's, yes. it's like my heart, but, I, but this also gives us so much more. <laughs> and it's because they had this freedom, yes. right? Where the others got kind of silenced by some of the, the powers of the kings in the time in the Old Testament. That's what happened. And that's why Lehi needed to get away so we could learn so much more. Yes, I love that. I love that so much. And I love how we um learn from that like in our that there is possibility there is freedom it is the promised land you know yes it's Jesus, it's his land he's gonna guide us he's gonna protect yes. us we must yep. i also love the words of elder oaks that he's saying it's gonna be okay as long yes. as god do not fear i'm gonna put that that's right i'm gonna do a whole Please, bundle yes. with all the sparks from our conversation yeah. so i'm gonna put this who can get it they can just type freedom and i'll send everything all from all these great quotes and the talk yes. and the art a little wallpaper again and give that yeah everybody be so you know, fun. your your um president oaks's comment about it and it, having hope and somebody else mentioned that earlier in the comments too yes it really is like our job as saints as people who are you know disciples of christ and covenant keepers like we do have to have hope right if we don't have hope yeah. who can we, we it's not all is not lost right we do have liberty we do have the fullness of the gospel and it's being restored more and more as we live we have temples to worship like 
there is so much good to be grateful for because of the liberty that we enjoy that he's right. We should be optimistic yeah. and hopeful. I think it's not all doom and gloom, even though our world is changing. We just can yeah. be more brighter lights in that world. And I love that. Yeah. And I love, it made me think when you said the greatest manifestations that our, our prophet was talking about that will be happening in our day and age. I mean, when you talked about temples, they are dotting yeah. the earth. There's so the much earth. more light. It's, never it's incredible. And that's another thing of Lehi too. So Lehi coming here, they built temples in the Book of Mormon times, right? And in the olden days, like one of the reforms that they did to kind of move away from Christ was they said there only had to be one temple. It used to be there were more temples and everyone had more of a right and access to this. But, but the restored gospel is now bringing temples all over the world. And every time there's a new temple, I know everyone gets excited, but we get so excited because you think, there's so many more people that have access to these covenants with God and yeah. these rights, these, this agency to make these promises and get closer to God. Like what could be worldwide. better? Worldwide. Like, yeah. Oh my God. Yeah, worldwide. It's so cool. It's so and one day, one day in, in Bulgaria and one day in Iran. <laughs> okay. We're going to manifest it. One day there will be a temple in our countries and our people will be able to find Jesus Christ. I believe that. Yeah. I mean, we know that it will happen and whether it's now or in the millennium, like, they will be able to worship like we do and be able to make covenants like we do. And I'm, I yes. believe it. I know God is real and his power is strong and yes. that will happen. I love that. Oh my gosh. I love, I love so much, so much our prophet who is telling us that and, and uh, President Oaks too. He's like, just have faith in God. Keep yes. searching him, keep staying strong in his gospel and standing for freedom, defend the constitution. These are just so amazing and beautiful um, words. Um, someone here is sharing i love president nelson's teaching on joy it's regardless of our circumstance freedom for our soul is the same it's from our savior not our circumstances oh my gosh oh yeah. yes yes in such Amen. a beautiful, beautiful way i love this i'm going to touch on this real quick because america is the country where dreams come true and yes. it's true it you really can't i love this quote a friend actually sent me it says, I believe in America because we have great dreams and because we have the opportunity to make those dreams come true. It's by oh. Bill. I'll send that in the uh, sparks in the enlightened packet. And also I love this quote too, that was by Hubert Hoover, which was so, oh, so good about just like what we're talking about. I know time is like gone so It's fast. so good. I know. Sorry. I talked too much. <laughs> no, I love, love you. <laughs> but this quote was so cute. It says, Freedom is the open window through which pours the sunlight of the human spirit oh, and the human dignity. That's oh, so good. No. That's so good. It's so true. Okay, that reminds me of the DNC. One last thing. I was, oh, that's so good. The um, dignity. Hold on. Let me find it. It's so good. So DNC 103 is, is randomly 104, mostly, I guess, um, uh, really talks about this and okay this is 104 this reminds me of this dignity you talk about so it, it talks about law and importance of law and uh in establishing land it says that um basically our laws and our judges and all these things shouldn't um ne should never control conscience should punish guilt but never suppress the freedom of the soul and that this is like good government right preserves the freedom of our souls to, to feel how we want and to worship how we want. I love that. And this is the Doctrine and Covenants, 134, um, verse four. It's not one that we commonly connect with the Constitution of Liberty, but there's just so much in here. It's so good. I know, I know. Oh my gosh, I love it. It's so amazing. There's a great little quote. Um, um, I'm just gonna read here from Cindy. That's a great way to end. He's, she's saying, quoting our prophet, President Nelson, she's saying, that we may harness the power of truth to bless the lives of our citizens, that yeah. everyone may be free to do and be all that is within their divine potential. So oh, good. That's a good, good way to end yeah. this conversation. Yes. That truly, Amen. Peggy, maybe another piece is in the making about that. <laughs> um, so, yes, that's so, right. The windows of heaven. I love, I love the title. Yes. We need you. more art from you on this, these feelings you know channel them into more art because we there's just so much joy in this and when, when i see those two that we just went talked about there's just so much joy i have when i see this girl i'm like that's me and all of us we feel that and yeah. so we need to channel this into more art because that it shows our feelings for how how much we love 
this country the freedoms we enjoy and we just let's pray for it let's pray for america <laughs> god bless america god bless, and, and god bless america yes thank amen you so much for thank being you here. love you you're the best uh, you're an inspiration and everyone thank you guys so much for joining us you're amazing have thank a happy birthday yes. tomorrow celebrate america's birthday and freedom yes love thank you all you. Carpe diem. bye 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 bye